I have only one idea to share, um, and it's going to be very long. <laughs> it's when history start is, starts. History starts when we start to write. We know traditionally we have said that uh, prehistory is when we don't write, and then when we write starts history. And what is writing is um, to learn how to write, is to have special means to write. Um, there is scarcity of paper on every instrument for writing, and uh, we act voluntarily when we write. We write what we really want to write. This is interesting because um, it seems that we are not doing this anymore. Something important has changed. We are writing everything. Every movement we make, every payment we make, every chat we have with friends, everything is written. And it's not written by our voluntary will to write. It's written by something automatic. So everything is written and we know that uh, that is becoming overwhelming. It's uh, 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 Martin Hilbert who said that uh, uh, from 2000 to 2013 we passed from writing uh, in digital format 25% of what we register, now we write the 98% of what we register on digital form. And it's not because uh, we abandoned uh, analog ways to register, but it's because we started to write everything. It's everything is written. If everything is written and automatically written, uh, then this is not history anymore. We are not in the same place where we were. If we start history from prehistory by writing, what happens when we write everything? And we don't choose to write, but we automatically write everything. Well, my, pro my proposition is that we are not in the history anymore. We are in hyperhistory, hyperhistory. Um, if we want to discuss about hyperhistory, when everything is written, when not only the important things are written, but everything is written, and then there, uh, uh, we have a lot of questions to, to answer. What is important? Who has the power? What is freedom? Um, follow this idea for a minute and start thinking what happened between prehistory and history. Um, yes, traditionally we say it's the re writing that changes everything. And the writing is uh, scarce and we choose to write what's important. We have um, uh, now everything written, and so also what is not important, or what is uh, just happening, is written. If power was to write law, now every body is writing and is writing things that uh, influence behavior in ways that uh, makes uh, somebody else do what has been written. What is deciding what is important now is the algorithm. It's the platform. What is 
scarce, what is power, is writing algorithms and platforms. We used to say in Latin, verba volant scripta manent, and manent meant that it was important. Now what's written is in the flow, it flows away. Vol volant uh, scripta. Um, so what stays, what is persistent, is the logic of the platform, is the logic of the algorithm that makes the platform work in the way it does. So the real power is in writing algorithm. We could even say that lore is an algorithm, and there is a, a lot of people that is trying to make laws in terms of software, software and algorithms. Um, who has the power of writing algorithms? Well, those that know how to do it. Uh, the knowledge that is, it used to be linked to power, it used to be how to write. Now, the power is how to write algorithms, because those are uh, discriminating, choosing between what's important and what's not important. Um, not every single thing that is written is important. It's important the way we treat what is written. And algorithms do that. Institutions that write algorithms become the new important institutions. But in history, they were built. We built parliament to say that what is written there is the law for everybody. Now we write institutions, and we write the algorithm of the institution. Power has changed from where it was, and we were used to be, uh, to a place in which it is the ability, the knowledge, and the culture to write algorithms that makes what is written persistent. The real writing is writing algorithms. The rest is flow. It's life. It's what happens. We register everything. We register our own life. What is important is decided by the algorithm. The power um, must be discussed. If we want a democratic way to choose, uh, we need to discuss the algorithm and the institutions that write them. Um, and th this means that we need a place in which uh, there is the freedom to write new algorithms and new platforms. The whole set of discussions about uh, the power of Google and Facebook and every other big platform is usually or Uber, it's usually uh, a di divide between those that see the problem, the danger, and the disruption that is happening, um, and those that think that that is the inevitable uh, coming up of the new way we will live. And there is uh, clearly a divide that is unsolvable in that way um, because nobody will defend forever the right of taxes to be the only people that brings people around um, while we also understand that the inevitable uh, growth of the platform 
it's not sufficient to understand the way we will live with that new system. We discuss, for example, about the idea of on-demand work. If every work is on-demand, every single task is a small task that is organized by the platform and by the algorithm, then the power of creating, of owning the, the platform is very big and somebody needs to discuss it. Freedom is to write and to be able to write new platforms that deal with the problems that come with the platforms already existing. And um, freedom needs to be uh, preserved. We know that the inev inevitability of uh, platforms taking the power is um, understandable. Complexity, in a world in which everything is written, complexity is too big to be dealt with without algorithms, and algorithms have the power to, uh, as somebody said before, uh, transform cows in order. But this means that if we don't discuss that power, that power will become uh, too big. The ability to write new platforms is very scarce. It's too scarce. It's, it's not right the way we are dealing with this problem now. Uh, the outstanding majority of us is not able to influence the way platforms and algorithms are written. Um, there is too few that influence the way we write algorithms and platforms. The vast majority just use them. And as you know, that means a great possible manipulation. We all have seen the, the outcome of the Facebook experiment two years ago. You remember? Who remembers the, 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 the experiment that uh, Facebook did with 600,000 people? You remember? Somebody remembers? Oh, raise the hand. So maybe I will remind you something. Two years ago, it came out that uh, some researchers in Facebook uh, tested an idea. They said, uh, we will test uh, our idea on 600,000 people, and uh, we will give to 300,000 of them uh, posts on their page in which there are only good and optimist words for a week. For a week, these people only had uh, on their page posts for fr from friends and other people that were optimists, were uh, happy. Something good has happened to me today. 300,000 people for a week. Um, the other 300,000 people, you may guess, uh, had only posts with pessimistic information, like, this day was bad for me. And the question that the researchers were looking uh, to, to answer was how uh, they react to this treatment. And of course, those that had only posts with uh, good ideas, good uh, news, they reacted by writing also good news, and they were optimistic for one week, more than the average. The other 300,000, they wrote pessimistic posts because everybody else, they thought, was writing uh, about bad news. This means that they came out with a paper, a scientific paper, and they were happy with that, and nobody 
cared much about this understanding because it was clearly banal. But what was not banal was the fact that they were able to influence the mood of 600,000 people via an algorithm. Using an algorithm, the algorithm of Facebook was able to make some people happier and some people less happy. The power to use this kind of stuff uh, was a surprise for many. And uh, there was uh, some protesting. And the researchers said, well, in front of these protests, we will say that we will not do this anymore without uh, the head of Facebook deciding this for us. So the power to influence one billion and a half people on the world is in the hands of two, three people at the head of Facebook. That is a big power. And it must be challenged, not because we don't trust Mark Zuckerberg, but it must be challenged because we want to be free. We want to express ourselves without being manipulated by an algorithm. Um, so freedom now is the knowledge that is needed to write algorithms that work, that people use, that people adopt, that make something happen. And uh, this means that it's important to think about uh, in hyper history uh, what, what, be, what is uh, human rights to be transformed in. Uh, there is a debate about human rights in hyper history, even though it's not said with these words, um, and some states, some organizations, some groups of people are working on this. What is freedom in the hyper-history age? In uh, Brazil, they have a law. In uh, uh, France, they are studying about that. Uh, in Italy, we had uh, uh, a discussion during one, one year, and it came out with a declaration of uh, rights in the internet. Um, these are first steps uh, of a discussion about the way humans will need to think in hyperhistory. Um, we said that net neutrality is a human right because that is the beginning and the precondition of every freedom to write a new platform. We said that platforms need to be interoperable because that's, that's the precondition to uh, guarantee that identity and information about every individual can be a property of that individual and not of the platform that he, he or she uses. Um, we said that every new law about uh, the internet and the infosphere need to be um, written only after uh, an analysis of the impact of the ecosystemic impact of uh, its uh, uh, consequences. Um, in hyperhistory that we just began to grasp, uh, freedom and power are shifting from uh, uh, the writing of uh, laws and uh, um, ideas to the Algorithm, algorithmic treatment of every single thing is, is written. And uh, this means that our understanding of human rights need to shift also at the new, a new level 
uh, in which political power, economic power, and uh, uh, any other difference between humans is discussed in terms of culture and knowledge. A new uh, idea of justice starts with a redistribution of knowledge. And that's my speech. Thank you.